Hi guys, my name is Christian. I'm one of the African penguin keepers here at the Erie Zoo. Um, as you can see, we have our penguins outside. We have 13 of them total. Uh, these guys have their name because they are found typically only in islands off of the southwest coast of Africa. Um, and they're the only penguins that actually breed in Africa. Because they are from Africa, they actually will thermoregulate a lot better than a lot of penguins. Typically when you think of penguins, you probably think of cold weather. Um, but that's not the case with these guys. They're pretty well adapted to a lot of climates. Um, they are about six to nine pounds uh, and up to two feet tall. Males will be a little bit bigger um, than the females um, and they'll have a little bit bigger of a beak. So if you look at them, you can see that they have a lot of black and white on them. So they have a white belly typically. Uh, the reason they have a white belly is when they are in the water and they have predators such as seals or sharks, um, if they are above the predator and they look up, their white will kind of help blend in with the sunlight that's beaming down the water. And on their backs, it's mostly black, and that will help if a predator's above them and looks down, they will just kind of blend in with the dark sea underneath them. As you guys can see, these guys have a distinctive pink patch right above their eyes. This is actually unique to these guys. Um, it's actually sweat glands, and it helps them thermoregulate. These guys are very well adapted to a lot of range of climates, so that will actually help them keep cool. They will often shed all of their feathers and grow back new feathers. This takes about three weeks for them to do. Um, so sometimes you'll come to the zoo and you'll see um, they're kind of all puffy and look a little ragged. That's just them going through their normal molt cycle. Um, in the wild, actually, when they do molt, they actually cannot go into the water because they do not have the waterproofing capabilities. Therefore, they will spend the entire three weeks uh, fasting because they cannot go out and hunt. Now our guys here, luckily when they molt, we hand feed them, they don't have to worry about that, so we will keep feeding them even when they are molting. Um, but typically they will just use their fat reserves in the wild when they do molt. Um, and we do know when ours are about to molt because they start to eat quite a bit, um, just to kind of plump up. And as you can imagine the wild, they would eat quite a bit just so they have more fat reserves when they do molt. Um, they are flightless birds but they are made to swim very well. So these guys, their bodies are streamlined to swim and dive, and they have very thin flippers that kind of help them dive. Uh, these guys can swim up to 12 miles offshore, and they can actually dive 80 feet, um, hold their breath for a minute, but I think there's some cases where they can go for uh, four and a half minutes or so, 400 feet down. So they're pretty good swimmers. These guys move pretty fast. All the African penguins actually live in colonies. So like I said, they are on the coast of Africa. They live on about 24 islands um, and they will all breed and uh, lay eggs and incubate all these giant colonies. They are monogamous, so they will mate for life. Um, all of them here except for our one, which was offspring recently, um, they are all mated pairs. So they will band together for most of their life. Um, they will typically have two to four eggs that they will lay and incubate for about 40 days. And actually both parents will take turns in incubating those eggs while the other one kind of gets fish. So at two to four months, the young babies will start to fledge. Um, they'll start going and adventuring on their own um, and they will begin to go out and see. And then typically within one to two years of age, they'll actually return back to where they were uh, born and they will get their adult plumage feathers. Now we do have 13 um, and we actually will identify them by their bands. So you'll see that they have a lot of plastic bands um, some on their right flipper, some on their left flipper. Um, so as keepers, we have to memorize pretty much what color is what penguin. The names of all of our penguins include the mated pairs Albert and Indy, Haley and Kylie, Jack and Dory, Casey and Ruby, Pearl and Sydney, Chris or Christmas and Ricky, and last but not least, Anchovy. So these guys are endangered. Um, at, in the 19th century, there was an estimated 4 million individuals, and nowadays there is 50,000 individuals in the wild um, and declining. There are several reasons for this decline. Um, one would be what they eat. So these guys will typically eat fish, squids, things like that. Um, we are overfishing in this, the uh, oceans. 
taking out a lot of their fish that they normally would eat for their diet. Um, and unfortunately, when parents um, run into scarce diet out in the wild, they actually will not um, starve themselves for their young. They will actually keep eating um, to make sure that they're strong. And a lot of times their young will not make it. Um, so that actually is a big reason for decrease um, in young that are born. Oil spills is another major issue that is plaguing these guys. There's been several oil spills, obviously, as everyone knows. Um, and these guys will actually make their nests out of their own excrement um, called guano. And the problem is that, that a lot of that is actually used for fertilizer. So they will actually come in and take a lot of that so these guys don't have as much nesting material to use. Another major issue, which isn't too much of a big deal these days, but they actually used to be considered a delicacy, their eggs. Um, so they would actually steal the eggs for commercial purposes. Um, and the sad thing is that they would go through all these colonies, step on all the eggs and crush them a few days before, just so they know that they were collecting fresh eggs to sell. So a lot of these issues have plagued these guys and that's why their numbers have gone down so fast. Um, it is estimated if their decline continues, they may be extinct within five to 10 years. Um, but fortunately there are some programs that are out there to help the conservation of these guys. Um, and the zoo is a part of a lot of conservation efforts with the uh, African penguins. So this is Rachel, she's another one of the African penguin keepers and she's gonna be helping us feed the penguins today. So the penguins uh, will eat trout and capelin. So the trout is the goldish colored fish and the capelin is the silver fish. Their preference is the trout. So typically they will eat all the trout uh, before they go to the capelin. But part of the job of being a penguin keeper is knowing who prefers what uh, every now and then depending. Some of the penguins will prefer capelin so you'll have to keep track of who likes capelin and who likes trout better. Uh, we also give all of our penguins daily vitamins and um, some of them do get medicine daily. So what we typically will do, we'll take their favorite fish and we will put the vitamins or medicine in the gills or the mouth and kind of stuff the fish so that they will eat the fish and not know any of the better. The African penguins here at the Erie Zoo, they do have um, an enrichment program that they get. Um, every day they'll get a different type of enrichment to kind of keep them occupied and um, get them to behave as they would in the wild. A lot of the enrichment we'll give them will actually encourage nesting behavior and the behavior um, of them laying on eggs, incubating them, and things of that nature. So we'll often give them a lot of different toys and things that they can manipulate, play with, um, they'll often overnight grab every single toy that we put out for them and they will take it into their crates which acts as their nest. Um, they also will always be carrying a bunch of different things out in their yard, uh, twigs, leaves, rocks, things like that to make their nest. So we'll oftentimes give them a lot of different uh, plants and browse and stuff that they can use for nesting material. Um, they also will get a frozen treat so we'll give them smelt. Um, or capelin and we'll put them in a big bunk pan, put some water in it and freeze it so it kind of gets them to work for their food. They also are actually given dummy eggs so they're similar in size, color and shape of a regular egg that they would lay um, and that will just recreate their paternal and maternal instincts to incubate that egg uh, for 40 days and keeps their well-being exceptional. Sometimes, and wait to eat, so he's always just 
crack me up. Anchovy um, is another 